Good evening. Can you hear me? Yes. Good evening, teacher. Can I hear you? Excellent. Okay. Everybody, welcome. Let's begin this. Um, let me share the screen with you. That's the first thing, as usual. There it is. Okay. Um, attendance. Need to read the attendance list. When you hear your name, please let me know. Abdi Abisua Peña Lopez. Here. Okay, thank you. Alejandro Jose Quintanilla Ayala. Present, teacher. Good evening. Welcome. Ana Filomena Mendoza. Good evening, teacher. Present. Welcome. Ana Yanira Mendoza Godoy. Ana Yanira Mendoza Godoy. Andrea Michelle Garcia Selva. Andrea Michelle Garcia Selva. Byron Rafael Avelar Aquino. Present teacher, good evening. Hello, good evening. Boris Martín Salinas Quintanilla. Boris Martín Salinas Quintanilla. Cecilia Elizabeth Guardado Gutiérrez. Cecilia Elizabeth Guardado Gutiérrez. César Alexander Ramírez Ramírez. César Alexander Ramírez Ramírez. Claudia Yanet Iraeta Martínez. Claudia Janet Iraeta Martínez. Debbie Natalia Segura Ramos. Debbie Natalia Segura Ramos. Daisy Carolina Rodríguez Mejía. Presente. Welcome. Gabriela Loure Sequeira Bernal. Gabriela Loure Sequeira Bernal. Gabriela Stephanie Cortés de Martínez. Gabriela Stephanie Cortés de Martínez. Gladys Imelda Sánchez. Gladys Imelda Sánchez. Jenny Elizabeth Santillana Cortés. Good evening, present. Good evening. José Raivín Enríquez. Good evening, teacher. Good evening. Carla Stephanie Perla Umansor. Carla Stephanie Perla Umansor. Luis Fernando Enrique Herrera. Good evening, teacher. Good evening. Madeline Diana Cerón de Paz. Madeline Diana Cerón de Paz. Maritza Isabel Méndez Aguirre. Present, teacher. Welcome. Melanie Andrea Trinidad Villanueva. Present. Welcome. Noemí Alicia Estrada de Valle. Present, teacher. Welcome. Reina Isabel Romero Ventura. Hello. Hello. Rosa Esmeralda Hernández de Flores. Present, teacher. Good evening. Good evening. Rufino Amilcar Hernández Linares. Present, teacher. Welcome. Sandra Cecilia Munguía. Present. Welcome. Okay, we have a chat entry too. Chat entry, Cecilia Elizabeth is present. Thank you. And uh, Cesar also. Thank you. And Gabriela Stephanie. Thank you very much. Okay, let's begin. Um, everybody, welcome once again. This is Advanced English 3, and that's me, Ivan Donyang, at your service. Once again, this is session number 8, and today we have November the 9th of 2023. Okay, let's begin. Um, what are we going to do? Well, yesterday we were studying simple and complex indirect questions. So we're going to continue that topic today. So we started the topic. Also, we did the, the knowledge check, okay, that you can find in the material, I mean, in the, in the platform. It's this one right here. Uh, some of you were commenting that the first one, 
uh, will not accept the correct answer, but that's because the answer that is programmed has a typo in it. So if you want to have it correct, okay, uh, or taken as correct by the platform, you have to like make the same typo. This is not the right spelling of the word, but this is what you have to, you know, type in if you want to get it correct. Okay, so moving on. Simple and complex indirect questions. Take a look at this. If the beginning clause of an indirect question is in statement word order, the sentence is a statement and ends with a period. So the first one is, I'm curious about. When you say, I'm curious about, that's not a question. You are only saying that you are curious about something, but you are not really asking a question. So if that's the case, don't end the indirect statement in this case with a question mark. You just end it with a period, okay? So you say, for example, I'm curious about why he didn't complain to the landlord. You are not really asking why this person didn't complain to the landlord. You're not asking a question. You are just saying that you are curious about the reason why this person didn't uh, complain to the landlord, but you're not really asking a question, okay? This is a statement, only that. We have a chat entry. Good evening, Madeline says. Hello, Madeline. Thank you. All right. Uh, the second one. I am not sure who is responsible for repairing the roads. Okay, when you say that you are not sure, again, you're not asking a question. You're only saying that you are not sure. You don't know. Okay, so I am not sure who is responsible for repairing the roads. Boris is present also. Thank you, Boris. Okay, uh, the next one is, the big question is how we can get the city officials to listen to our concerns. Again, you're only stating that there is a question, but you are not asking the question. Now, if you notice, none of these three sentences ends with a question mark. They end with a period, okay? Be very careful right there. Now look, if the beginning of a clause of an indirect question is in question word order, in other words, if the beginning, if the, the main part is a question, then yeah, you will need a question mark. The sentence is a question and ends with a question mark. For example, when you say, do you have any idea? Now that's a question. You are asking a question this time. Do you have any idea how long it takes to get a passport? That's a question. Therefore, you need a question mark at the end. When you say, could you tell me, that's a question. Could you tell me where I can go to pay my parking ticket? Now that's a question. Therefore, you need a question mark at the end. Don't you wonder, that's a question, how a place with such poor service stays in business? Okay, that's a question. Therefore, you need a question mark. So just, just be careful, right? not to confuse a statement with a question. They are two different things. If you begin your indirect statement uh, with a phrase like this, you say, I'm curious about, well, you're just saying you're curious, but you're not asking a question. If you say, I'm not sure, well, you're saying you're not sure, but you are not asking a question. And the big question is, again, you are saying that a question exists, but you are not asking the question. So no question marks. But if you say, do you have any idea? That's a question. Could you tell me? That's a question. Don't you wonder? That's a question. Therefore, you will need question marks at the end. So be very careful right there. We're going to do an exercise based on this. Exercise number one is rewrite these sentences using the words in parentheses. So the first one we're going to do is an example. Why can't the city add more street lights? Now, that's a direct question. Now you have this, I don't understand. Before we solve this, I need a volunteer just to tell me one thing. I don't want you to tell me the, the answer. I just want you to tell me if you will need a question mark or not. What do you think? Do you think we will need a question mark in this case or should we end it with a period? If you want to participate, please raise your hand. Mm -hmm. Don't be afraid, Maritza. Uh, it's not 
equations are for me. To use because a question mark. Uh -huh. That is correct. Okay, because when you say, I don't understand, you are simply stating that you don't understand. Okay, you are not asking a question. So yeah, that is right. Thank you, Maritza. In this case, you don't need a question mark. You only need a period. Now, let's take a look. You say, I don't understand why. And now in the question, you say, can't the city add? Remember that you have to finish this as an affirmative sentence. So you say, the city can't add more street lights, period. No question mark, because this is not a question, really. OK, very good. Now, that was only an example. For starting with number two, you have to you know, give me the full answer. So number two is, is the city going to improve the rush hour bus service? And then you have, do you know? So what about number two? Who can tell me in direct question? Ms. Romero. Do you know the, the yeah. Okay. Do you know the city is going, um, yeah, <laughs> it's going to improve the rush hour bus service. Do you know the city is going to improve the rush hour bus service? Yeah. <laughs> one one word is missing. Do you know that the city? Mm -mm. Mm. Okay, I'll give you a hint. This is a okay. yes no question. That's that's the hint. It's a yes no question. No. <laughs> okay, all right. Let's let's hear uh, what Alejandro has to say. If the city, you should, do uh -huh. you know if the city is going to build the rush hour bus service? That's right. Do you know if right the city is going to improve the rush hour bus service? Yeah, that's 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 it. Uh, if you have a when you have a yes no question, you have to use if. If it is an information question, then you use the WH word. Okay, so uh, thank you, uh, Ms. Romero, and also thank you, Alejandro. What about number three? Why are prices going up so fast? And then you have, it's something that baffles me. When you say something that baffles me, that means something that completely confuses me. It's like, I don't understand. I, I, I don't know. I don't understand. That's the meaning of that. When you say, it's something that baffles me. Who wants to participate? This is an example of a more complex indirect question or indirect statement. Maritza. Um, why are price going up so far? It is something that baffles me. The baffles me. Okay. <laughs> Okay, good, but there is a problem with word order. Um, Remember that you don't have to use uh, the word order of a question. You have to use the word order of a statement. So second try. Um, Maybe why are price going up so fast is something. Mm -hmm. That baffles me. But that that's th that's the same statement you just gave me a moment ago. <laughs> <laughs> oh. it, it, it is something that pays me. Mm, not exactly. What? But well, but thanks for, for, for trying. I, I really appreciate it. Who can help us here? Give it a try. I think it is why prices are going up so fast. Mm -hmm. Something that bothers me. Yeah. Bothered me. Why? I so said your prices. I made a mistake right there. Let me correct this. You see, we all make mistakes. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. So why? Prices are going up so fast. It's something that baffles me. Okay, that's correct. Okay, that's good. Why prices are going so fast, are going up so fast is something that baffles me. 
Now, if you notice here, I'm going to zoom in. When you say why, okay, that's a question word. Are prices going up? That's the structure of a question. Are prices going up? But in an affirmative sentence, you will say prices are going up. You know, the word order is a little bit different. Okay, thank you very much. Always raise our hand, okay, when you want to participate. So number four, how can I finish the work before the deadline? I have no idea. Byron. <laughs> okay, I have no idea how I can finish the work before the deadline. That is correct. I have no idea how I can finish the work before the deadline. That is correct. Thank you, Byron. Number five. Have you saved enough money for school? And you have, would you mind telling me? <clears throat> have you saved enough money for food, for school? Would you mind telling me? Uh, who wants to participate? Please raise the hand. Debbie, is that you? No? Okay, who wants to give it a try? Sorry. <laughs> okay. Always, always, let's raise a hand. All right, Debbie. Okay. Let me check because okay. I haven't done it. <laughs> oh, all right. All right. No problem. Okay. Have you saved enough money for school? Mm. No, sir. I think that I'm mm -hmm. a little bit lost in this topic. Okay. <laughs> no problem. No problem. Let's hear uh, Maritza Isabel. Let's see what she has to say. And then okay. Alejandro. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, would you mind telling me if you have saved enough money for school? Correct. Would you mind telling me if you have saved enough money for school? Yeah, that's right. This is a yes, no question. Therefore, you need to use if, right? And also, you need to use uh, statement word order. Normally, in a question, you say, have you saved? But in a sentence, you say, you have saved. Okay? So, yeah, that's correct. Would you mind telling me if you have saved enough money for school? Very good. Thank you. Thank you, Maritza. Number six, why aren't there any bike paths in the city? And then you have is beyond me. Let's participate. Vamos, yo quiero escuchar también voces que no solo me digan presente en la clase, ¿verdad? Porque hay algunos que solo en ese momento les escucho la voz. Let's participate. Let's give it a try. Mm -hmm. Jose Raivin. Uh, why there are not any bike paths in the city is beyond me. Why there aren't or why there are not, okay, any bike paths in the city is beyond me. Okay, that is correct. Thank you, Jose. Very good. Number seven. How am I going to pay the rent this month? My main problem is. Madeline. My, my main problem is how I am. I'm sorry. How I am going to pay the rent this month. Okay, good. Question mark or not? Mm, let me think no no that is correct my main problem is how i am going to pay the rent this month yeah you're not asking a question you're just telling other people what your main problem is good thank you that is correct thank you very much number eight when are they going to build a new hospital do you have any idea if you want to participate please raise your hand jenny elizabeth I try to do. Um, do you have any idea when they are going to build a new hospital? 
question mark or not? Not. No question mark? Are you no sure? Question. Why why not? If you because. notice at the beginning you have do you do you have any idea? Is that a question? This is a question. Do you have ah, any idea? They just it's a no question. question. It's a it's a question, correct. So do yes. we need a question mark? No. No? <laughs> Actually, we do because it's a question. Oh, you notice okay. when you say, do you have any idea? That's a question. So yeah, question uh -huh. mark is needed. For the rest, okay. it is correct. Thank you, Jenny. Okay. Do you have any idea when they are going to build a new hospital? Okay, question mark at the end. Okay, thank you. What about number nine? Who decided to close the swimming pool in the park? Don't you wonder... Ah, this one. Okay. Um I'm I'm telling you this in advance. This is this is a bit different, but okay, Gabriela, let's give it a try. Okay. Who decided to close sorry, sorry. Don't you wonder who decided to close the swimming pool in the park? Question mark or not? Yes. Yes. Question mark. That's right. Don't you wonder who decided to close the swimming pool in the park? Now, you may be wondering, hey, but what about this one? We, we didn't have to change anything, basically. All the words remain in the same order. That's correct. Because the first question, the direct question, is something that we call a subject question. Okay? Subject questions don't follow, you know, the order of a question. They follow the order of a statement. So when you have a subject question as a direct question, if you want to make an indirect question out of that, it basically, the, the word order remains the same, okay? So it's a special case, but yeah, okay, Gabriela, you have the right answer, very good. Number 10, is tuition going up again next year? I have to find out, Rufino. I'm going to try. Please. It's, uh, I, ha I have to find out uh, tuition is going up again next year. Okay, but one word is missing. What word is missing? Um, I'm not sure. <laughs> You're not sure. Okay. <laughs> I don't... Question, question, Rufino. Let's take a look at the main question. <laughs> is tuition going up again next year? Is this a yes, no question or an information question? Um, uh, for me, uh, information. Information questions begin with WH words like when, why, who, how, which, uh, etc., no. etc. So this one is? Uh, the other? What? What's the other? Yes, no questions. Is it a yes, no question? Yes, no question. It's a yes, no question. Okay, so what word do we need to use when you have when you want to ask an indirect question based on a yes, no direct question? When? No, it's not when. when. No, sorry. It's a bit different. <laughs> okay. Okay, but but thank you, thank you, Rufino. Uh, Boris. Okay. Wait, wait, wait a second. We have to raise your hand. Okay. Boris, it's Boris's turn. Okay, Boris. <laughs> no. Um, well, they give the the answer. Uh, oh, well, can you, uh -huh, can you tell if, us? Okay. Uh -huh. If. if. Yeah, the word uh, is if, right? That is right. So. Okay, I, I have to find out if Tushum is going, is going, 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 going again in the year. Okay. Uh, I have to, can you repeat it, please? I have to find out. I have to find out if tu tuition, tuition is going, tuition is going up again next year. Yeah, that's right. I have to find out if tuition is going up again next year. Okay. Yeah, that's right. Every time you have a yes, no question and you want to ask an indirect question out of it, you have to use if. Okay. If it's an information question, then you have to use the question word. When, why, how, which, who, et cetera, et cetera. Correct. Very good. And in this case, we have no question mark because this is not really a question when you say, I have to find out. Okay, yeah. All right. You're not asking a question. You're just telling me that you need to find out something. 
Okay, very good, very good. For the next exercise, okay, <clears throat> we're going to do the opposite. Okay, now, uh, well, you have an indirect question right here. Sorry, a direct question, and then you have to uh, give me an indirect question. But this time, you have an indirect question, and you have to tell me the direct question. It's the opposite process. Number one, for example, is I haven't got a clue, which means I have no idea. I haven't got a clue what we're supposed to do for homework tonight. That's the indirect statement. Now, the direct question will be, what are we supposed to do for homework tonight? Okay, so it's the opposite this time. Okay, quite the opposite. What about number two? How people can mistreat animals is mystifying to me. How about this one? What will be the direct question? When, when you say it's mystifying to me, it's similar to is beyond me. Alejandro Quintanilla. <laughs> um, how? So far, so how, good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how can how can people mistreat animals? Yeah. How can people mistreat animals? Yeah, that's the direct question. Good. Thank you, Alejandro. That is correct. Thank you. Good. Number three, what I don't get is how I can keep up with all this new technology. What will be the direct question? Madeline Diana. Um, can I keep up with all this new technology? Can you repeat it, please? I'm sorry. Can I keep up with all this new technology? Okay, the, the word order is correct, but you I'm left sorry. out. Aha, aha. How? Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, how can I keep up with all this new technology? With correct. Aha, uh -huh. that's right. How can I keep up with all this new technology? Okay. In this case, all of them will have a question mark because they are all questions. Direct questions are always questions. But yeah, how can I keep up with all this new technology? What, what you told me before was grammatically correct, but it was a different type of question. If you said, can I keep up with all this new technology? That will be a yes, no question, but grammatically correct though. Okay, thank you, Madeline. Number four, why the government, okay. Number four, why the government doesn't outlaw spam is my number one question. Outlaw is prohibit. Byron, and then Cecilia. Okay. Why the government doesn't outlaw spam? Um, word order, my friend. Why the government outland doesn't spam? Mm, no, sorry. <laughs> it's a bit different. Uh -huh. Okay, okay. Why doesn't the government outland spam? <laughs> yeah, that's that's more like it. Correct. Why doesn't the government outlaw spam? That's right. Very good. Very good. Thank you, Byron. You see, if, if, uh, if you don't get it right the first time, keep trying. Keep trying. Okay. That's right. Very good. Um, Cecilia. Number five, I'd like to know who should be responsible for check for keeping our city clean. Now, a hint. This is something that I mentioned in the in the previous exercise. This is a subject question. So, Cecilia, what do you have? Mm -hmm. Who should be responsible for keeping our city clean? Correct. Nothing changes. Okay, the word stays, I mean, the word order stays the same because uh, it's, a, it's a subject question. So who should be responsible for, for keeping our city clean? Okay, thank you, Cecilia. You have the right answer. Number six, it's a bit more difficult. Okay, let's see who can tell me this one. Tell me what I have to do to get my driver's license. This one is a bit more difficult. Cecilia, okay.
when have I to do to get my driving license? Can can you repeat that, please? I'm sorry. What have I to do? Uh huh. Um, well, that will, that, that will not what, be possible. Uh -huh. What mm -hmm. to do? <laughs> I have to get my driver's license. Um, Can you repeat that? The last one. What? What uh, do to uh, I have? Um. I, you you okay. have you have the idea you have the idea but but <laughs> we need to work on it. Um, okay maybe jose Rivin can can help us with this but thank you cecilia thanks for your participation jose uh, could you could you tell me uh, what do i have to do to get my driver's license However, uh, you don't have to. You don't have to add the extra. Could you tell me? Because you will be asking an indirect question. The idea right here is to ask a direct question. What should I do to get my driver's li license? Okay, I mean that's a grammatically correct question, but you are changing substantially the question by adding should. What do I have to do? Uh huh. Uh huh. What do I have to do to get my driver's license? That's right. What do I have to do to get my driver's license? This is present simple. And in present simple, you have to use the auxiliary do or does when the subject is he, she, or it. So yeah, <laughs> that's it. That's all. What do I have to do to get my driver's license? Okay, good. Thank you. Uh, thanks for, for your participation. Also, uh, uh, Cecilia, okay. Number seven, uh, thank you, Jose Rabin. Number seven, when when the next meeting will be is something I haven't found out yet. Who wants to try? This is a very short question. When the next meeting will be is something I haven't found, found out. Ms. Romero, thank you for raising your hand. Okay. <laughs> hey, I was getting used to. Uh, the answer would be when we be the next meeting is something that I haven't found out yet. Mm, okay. For starters, it's not necessary for you to say is something I haven't found out yet because you're asking a question directly. Okay. okay. Uh huh. <laughs> when we be the next meeting. Okay. But the word it... order, the word order is not right. Okay. When will the next meeting be? That's more like it. Yeah. <laughs> when will the next meeting be? Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's the right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. okay. When will it be? When will the next meeting be? Correct. Thank you very much, Mr. Romero. Number eight. I wonder if I should complain about my neighbor's loud parties. How about this one? If you know, please raise your hand. Jose, I don't know if you want to participate or if your hand is up only, if you forgot to put it down. Sure, teacher, I forgot you, you... to put it down. <laughs> okay. All right, so um, how about number eight? I wonder if I should complain about my neighbor's loud parties. Maritza Isabel. I try to try. Okay, please. Uh, should, I, should I complain about my neighbor's loud party? That is correct. Thank you. Should I complain about my neighbor's loud parties? Good. Good. Very, very good. Okay. Great. Okay, everybody. Thanks for your participation. By the way, the information that was here before doesn't appear in the manual, so I'm going to share it with you via WhatsApp. Just a moment. Um, advanced read right here. I'm also going to send you the exercises so you can study them. 
Just give me a second. <clears throat> exercise one, exercise two. Extra information right here. Okay, good. So what are we going to do? It's lesson objective 2.9. Okay, ah, Janita. Uh, good evening, teacher. Good evening. Uh, the, the last topic for me is so difficult. Oh, really? Could you, could you give me any clue to, to respond correctly in each case? In each case? But for me, it's, it's complicated. Okay. Um, let's see. The thing is, let's have a, let's have some examples, okay? Uh, remember that when you ask a question, you have a specific order. For example, if you want to ask a question with the modal auxiliary can, you have to begin with can. Can, then the subject, and then the verb. For example, can I park here, right? Can I park here? Your car, your park. Your, sorry, you, you park your car. <laughs> I'm dyslexic. So can I park here? So um, then this is the thing. First thing you need to identify it, what kind of question it is. This is essential. So uh, Janita, is this a yes, no question or is it an information question? Mm, maybe information question? Mm, not really. Information questions always begin with WH words like what, who, which, when, how, whose, uh, how much, how many, what time, etc. Now, when a question begins with one of those words, it is an information question. If a question begins directly with an auxiliary verb or with a model or with the verb, it is a yes no question. So this one begins with can which is a modal auxiliary verb. So that means it is a yes, no question. So that's the first thing that we need to know. We need to uh, know the difference or tell the difference between a yes, no question and uh, an information question, okay? And this one right here is a yes, no question. So can I park here? Mm -hmm. After that, you will need something like a question starter. You can, you can do it with a question like this, like, uh, do you know? You can say, um, can you tell me? You can say, uh, do you have any idea? Okay, et cetera, et cetera. Well, let's leave it like this. Do you know, can you tell me? So we have the main question, which is can I park here? So do you know? Now, if you have a yes, no question, you will have to use if, okay? Mm -hmm. That's very important. Do you know if? And after mm -hmm. that, you have to finish your, your, your question like an affirmative sentence. If the question was affirmative, if the question was negative, then you will have to finish it like a negative sentence. But most questions are affirmative. So can I park here? That's the statement. Sorry, that's the, the order of a question. Can I park? Now, you have to use the statement order. In a statement, you don't say, can I park? You say, mm -hmm. I can park, like yes. an affirmative sentence here. Mm -hmm. And one thing that you have to be careful with is this, the beginning. Do you know? That is a question. Therefore, you will need a question mark. Can you tell me? That's also a question. So let's just copy this. Can you tell me if I can park here? Now, let's try a different type of question. You have, where can I park my car? Where can I park my car? <clears throat> so, uh, Janita, is this, what kind of question is this? Is this a yes, no question or an information question? Mm. Information question. It's an information question. That is correct because it begins with where. And where is a WH word? Correct. Now, it's the same idea. But this time, you are not going to use if. Instead, you're going to use the WH word. Now, mm -hmm. 
do you know where, and then again, you are going to use the order of a statement, of an affirmative sentence, where I can I park can. my car. Do you know where I can park my car? You can say, can you tell me where I can park my car? Um, teacher, but yes. my daughter is in the last part when you uh, resolve the last, yes, in this case. This when one. we need to, when we need to, no. No. This? Yes. Yes, uh -huh. when, when we uh, pass to to affirmative sentence without the mark question. Ah, without the question mark. Okay, no uh -huh. problem. Okay, let's take a look. It all depends on how you begin your sentence or how you finish it. Okay, when you ask this, do you know? This is a question. You can see here there is an auxiliary verb and the main yes. verb. Can you tell me? Okay, this is also a question because yes. you have the auxiliary can and then you have the main verb tell. But what happens if you say something like, I don't know? Is this a question? No. It's not a question. You're only saying that you don't know. So when that happens, You don't need a question mark. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I can park here. Mm -hmm. So that's the thing. That's what you need to analyze. Um, you know, like, <laughs> it, is it a question? Okay. Well, then use a question mark. If it is not a question, don't use a question mark. Okay. <clears throat> Um, an example right here. Um, I need to find a place Okay, what happens when you say I need to find a place? Is that a question? No, it's not a question. Therefore, I need to find a place where I can park my car. No question mark at the end. That's all the analysis you have to do. Just wonder, like, is it a question? Yes, okay, use a question mark. Is it a question? No, okay, don't use a question mark. Just use the period. Is it uh, clearer? In this bit? case, yes. Okay. But in the last sentences, I, I doubt it. <laughs> Which one? Um, for example, in um, I can understand. Um, in all in all the case teacher is um, is only pass the 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 question uh, to a sentence a normal sentence the structure that you use is the is the structure of a normal sentence affirmative sentence in some cases negative like number 6 for example in number 6 you have why aren't there in the bike paths in the city. You have to use the structure of a negative sentence because the direct question is negative. They are using not. If that's the case, then yeah, you have to use the structure of a negative sentence, but only in those cases. Otherwise you will have to use the structure of an affirmative sentence. But we use it also why. Mm -hmm. Because as we stated before, you have to keep the question word. You have to use it if it exists. If it doesn't exist, then you have to use if. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
So in the indirect question, you have to use the question word. Why, mm -hmm. when, who, et cetera, et cetera. You have to use it. But the rest of it will have the structure of an affirmative or a negative sentence. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's better, thank you. Okay, great. Thank All you. right, you're welcome. All right, so um, let's continue. We have some vocabulary here, which is, uh, wait a second, let's say 2.9 was supposed to be a different one. Well, in this lesson, participants will learn vocabulary to talk about negative feelings. We don't have much time, so we're going to go uh, over this very quickly. So um, I'm totally baffled, okay? Look at these words that describe feelings. Put them in the columns below. Okay, the words are annoyed, baffled, confused, demoralized, depressed, discouraged, enraged, frustrated, humiliated, infuriated, insulted, irritated, mystified, saddened, and stunned. So I just want you to classify the words. Maybe you can tell me. So uh, what about confused feelings? The first one is baffled. When you're baffled, you're confused. You're like, ah, huh? <laughs> you don't understand what's happening. Angry feelings, annoyed, okay? When a person is annoyed, it's, okay, you don't like what's happening. You feel annoyed. And then you have sad feelings. So let's classify them. The first one is annoyed is here, angry feelings. Baffled, confused feelings. What about confused? I'm going to give you this one because it's pretty obvious. Confused is confused feelings, obviously, okay? What about next one, demoralized? What do you have? Where would you classify demoralized? That feeling. Uh, okay, thank you. <laughs> okay, let's remember, always let's raise our hands. Thank you, Cecilia. Uh, sad. Yeah, that's right. Demoralized is sad. When a person is demoralized, is disappointed, right? Okay, uh, thank you. What about the next one? Depressed. Maritza. Depressed, sad feelings. Sad feelings. That's right. Correct. Discouraged. What about discouraged? Jenny Elizabeth, then Cecilia. I think uh, discouraged is any angry feelings. Angry feeling. Okay. Mm, not really. It's a different category. Okay. <laughs> Second try. Um, confused. Confused. Feeling. It's actually, oops, it's actually sad. Okay, when a person is discouraged, is desanimado, right? Discouraged. Yeah. Okay, so it's a sad feeling. Discouraged. Thank you for participating. Cecilia, um, enraged. What about enraged? Angry feeling. It's an angry feeling. When a person is enraged, a person is furious. Okay, that's right. Enraged. Very good. Um, what about the next one? Frustrated. About frustrated. Boris and then Alejandro. Sad feeling. A sad feeling. Maybe. Okay. Maybe in, in some occasions it is sad, but most of the time when you feel frustrated. Confused feeling. Confused? Probably not. <laughs> it's more like angry, actually. Okay. Well, when, you, when you get yeah. aha, when you get frustrated, you go like ah, right? You feel frustrated because you can't do something or things don't go your way. So yeah, you get frustrated, but thank you. Thank you, Boris. Alejandro, okay. what about uh, humiliated? Sad feelings, teacher. It's a sad feeling, right? When you get humiliated, okay, it happens to you. Yeah, that's correct. Thank you. Um, the next one, infuriated. Infuriated, what about this one? Angry feeling. Uh, thank you, uh, Debbie. Debbie, okay. Uh, yeah, it's an angry feeling. That's correct. Uh, Noemi, what about insulted? Insulted. Uh, sad feeling? Sad feeling. Probably not. Uh, uh, angry feeling. It's an angry feeling. That's right. Okay. When somebody insults you, you feel angry. Okay. When a person is insulted. Thank you. Uh, Rufino, irritated. 
maybe a, um, angry feeling? It's an angry feeling. That's correct. Thank you. Uh, the next one, mystified. Who knows this one? Mystified. Cecilia. And then Boris. Confused feeling. It's a confused feeling when you're mystified. Uh -huh. Okay, you don't know what's going on. You don't understand. Yeah, that's correct. Uh, Boris, the next one. Saddened. This one it's is a easy. sad feeling. Yeah, <laughs> quite obviously. Okay. Yeah, it's a sad feeling. And the last one, stunned. About stunned. Maritza. Confused feelings. It's a confused feeling. When you're stunned, you're like, oh, what? Okay, I mean, you. sometimes you are so confused that you can't speak. Okay, that's the meaning of stunned. Sorry? Depending. Depends. Yes. Uh, ah. For example, is uh, so donde yo sé es como aturdido, no? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, a person can be stunned, for example, if somebody hits them. <laughs> okay, you can be like, oh, oh, oh. You can be, you can be stunned. But normally stunned in, the, in this context in particular means that a person is so confused that probably they can't even speak. And you go like, what? 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 What's going on? Huh? Okay. You don't know how to react to a situation because you are super confused. It's the meaning of stunned. Mm -hmm. But yeah, you can, a person can be stunned. For example, if, if, if the person gets hit, okay, you stun the person. It is possible to say that. Okay, uh, there's the vocabulary. We don't have much time, so well, we need to continue. Now, there's the reading section. Please work on this on your own because we don't have the time, unfortunately. Okay, we're going to go directly now over the uh, midterm. Okay, let's go over the midterm. Okay, there's the listening part. Okay, um, let's listen to this. Uh, you have Akiko isn't used to eating pasta, vegetables, and soup, cheese. Akiko eats eggs and rice with fish, cereal, and milk, or teriyaki for breakfast. Number three, a typical Australian breakfast, sandwiches, ostrich, or mi milk and cereal. And a typical Australian dinner is similar to a typical American, Korean, or British dinner. Let's listen to it, and then we're going to check answers. Listen to a conversation between two exchange students, Akiko and Jack. Then check the correct answers. Hi, Jack. Hello there, Akiko. How are you? Not bad. How about you? Excellent. I'm really enjoying living with my American host family. Yeah, me too. Except that sometimes it's hard to follow their customs. What do you mean? Well, the food mainly. My host family eats cereal and milk for breakfast and cheese sandwiches for lunch. And for dinner, they usually eat some kind of pasta with cheese sauce. Yeah, and? Is that weird? Well, at home, I don't eat so much milk and cheese. That's a lot of dairy. What does your family normally eat? Japanese food mainly. For breakfast, we usually eat rice and miso soup. For lunch and dinner, we eat rice and some type of grilled meat or fish, often with eggs. Sometimes my mother makes seafood and vegetables with noodles or prepares a tofu dish. We don't eat cheese or drink milk very often. I guess I never thought about how much dairy people eat here. Is it different in Australia? Well, Australians do eat a lot of dairy, but maybe not as much as Americans. What is traditional Australian food like? Hmm, well, breakfast is pretty much the same, milk and cereal, or muesli. For lunch and dinner, Aussie food used to be a lot like British food, Lots of meat pies and fish and chips. But now there is more variety. Sandwiches are common and we eat a lot of meat. Lamb and beef are popular. Some people even eat kangaroo steak. But that's a special dish. Kangaroo steak? What's that like? Delicious. You should try it. But hey, I love Japanese food too. I miss it so much. Hey, let's find a good Japanese restaurant and eat out tonight. Great idea. All right, so for the first one, Akiko isn't used to eating what? 
we can, because of the time, you can just say the answer. You don't need to raise your hand. Ana Filomena? Hello? Vegetables and soup. Vegetables and soup, correct. Number two, Akiko eats uh, what for breakfast, Cesar? Um, cereal and milk. <laughs> cereal and milk. Actually, eggs and, and rice with fish. That's it. Okay. Well, thank you. Jenny, number three, a typical Australian breakfast. What is it like? It's milk and cereal. Milk and cereal. Correct. And Byron, a typical Australian dinner is similar to a typical? British. British dinner. Correct. Okay. Second listening. Listening. Carl is upset because his application is due. His train was delayed or he was late getting to school. Number two, Carr missed a graduate school interview, meeting with his advisor or a midterm test. Number three, Carl is having trouble with graduate school classes, an essay for this applications or personal problems. And number four, the woman suggests that Carr knocked on his advisor's door, delay his appointment or switch appointments with someone. Let's listen to it. Then... Um, we're going to check answers together. Listen to a conversation between two students. Then check the correct answers. <clears throat> Hi, Carl. Hey, you seem annoyed. What's up? Oh, I'm just mad because it took me an hour and a half to get to school today. Why? All the construction on the subway lines. My regular train was delayed, so I had to take a different train. And then I got on the wrong one, and it's just so frustrating. Yeah, I hate that. I know they have to work on the subway lines. That's not the problem. The thing that bothers me is they don't tell you in advance. They just change the schedule, and you're stuck. I mean, what if I had missed a test in one of my classes? But you didn't. No, but I missed an appointment with my advisor. Now I have to wait two weeks to see her, and my graduate school applications are due soon. Bummer. Yeah, I need her help with my personal essays. One of them is driving me crazy. Just ask someone to switch appointments with you. That's a good idea. I'll check the names on the list of appointments posted outside her door. Thanks. All right, so Carl is upset because, why is he upset? Ana Filomena? His train was delayed. His train Listen was delayed. Listen to a conversation. But Sorry, okay, his train was delayed. Thank you. Number two, Carl missed a, what did he miss? Jenny? A meeting with his advisor. A meeting with his advisor, correct. Number three, Carl is having trouble with... What is, he what is he having trouble with, Ana Filomena? An um, essay for his application. An essay for his application. And number four, the woman suggests that car, that's correct, thank you, that car, what does she suggest? Can I? Yeah, sure. Uh, switch? Appointments with someone. Switch appointments with someone. That is correct. Now, combine and rewrite sentences. Probably you had some trouble right here. Okay, so uh, because of the time, we don't have time. So we're going to go over this very quickly. Combine the sentences using the words in parentheses. Remember to use capital letters and periods. Okay, so uh, people in French study British English. Japanese people generally study American English. You have to use the word don't like. So you have... Unlike people in France, comma, Japanese people usually study American English, period. Number two, some people love online shopping. Some people have never shopped online. And then you have while. Now, there's a little mistake in this one because the answer that you're supposed to type in is, while some people love online shopping, there should be a comma in this case, in a minor case S. Some people have never shopped online. But if you want to get it right, you have to use a period and a capital S. Okay. So just uh, use it like this. Teenagers like chatting online. My brother prefers books to the internet. So unlike teenagers, comma, my brother prefers books to the internet. 
And number four, Sue's parents are traditional. They want her to have a career. And then you have except for the fact that. So Sue's parents are traditional except for the fact that they want her to have a career. Here's another one. If you uh, use the comma and you leave a space as you should, it's probably going to take it as wrong. Okay, so don't leave the space. Use it without the space if you want to get it right. So those are the answers for the, this part. Uh, part two, rewrite sentences using the words in parentheses. Remember to use capital letters and periods. So why don't more people care about good manners? So I'd like to know. So I'd like to know why more people don't care about good manners. How can people afford to buy homes in this city? You have is beyond me. So how, by the way, uh, there's, by the way, sorry. Yeah, there's a, another mistake here because in the, in the platform is registered as this, how can people afford to buy homes in this city is beyond me, but the, the correct form should be how people can afford to buy homes in the city. But again, if you want to get it right, use it like this. Number three, why don't more upscale restaurants serve vegetarian dishes is what I don't get is. So what I don't get is why more upscale restaurants don't serve vegetarian dishes. And number four, will people ever stop fighting with each other? Then you have, I wonder. I wonder if people will ever stop fighting with each other. That's it. For the next exercise, you have circle the words. Delia used to conform to norms, but now she's rebellious. Okay, John hates to challenge the status quo. He likes following the crowd. Number three, when Jennifer was young, she was nonconformist, but now she is conservative. Number four, it's easy for some people to stand up for themselves. Number five, many teens prefer to fit in than to be their own person. And number six, Kyle is generally considered to be uh, amen, amenable, amenable, sorry, uh, she rarely makes waves. <clears throat> Number one, I don't know why organic produce is so expensive. I'm mystified. John was baffled when his shoes disappeared. No one else has size 14 feet. Number three, my grandmother became depressed when her cat died. And number four, Joy knew she wouldn't get the job, but she was discouraged anyway. Okay. Next exercise, ah, number five, Marcus was irritated by the people talking loudly in the movie theater. Number six, Lauren felt totally irritated when her car broke down again. Number seven, every time I hear the news about homeless in our city, I'm saddened. Number eight, what happened to John? I'm mystified as to why he never showed up. Those are the answers right there. Uh, next, oops, write the words. Write keep or stay to complete each sentence. Just type the, just type in the word. No capital letter or period is needed. So if you want to keep your grades up, you have to study hard. It's hard to what? It's hard to stay awake when you are studying late at night. Number three, in order to keep up with your assignments, it's best to write them down. Number four, even during a crisis, it's important to keep things in perspective. Number five, working full time makes it difficult to keep up with schoolwork. And number six, many students drink coffee in order to stay awake during early classes. Part two, write the correct form of uh, drive, get, or make to complete each sentence. Sometimes more than one answer is possible. Don't use capital letter or period. So people who interrupt me when I'm talking really drive me up the wall. Number two, it makes me sick with an S when stores and restaurants throw away good food. Number three, my brother is always teasing me. He really makes my blood boil. Number four, irresponsible people really make my blood boil. Number five, people who throw trash on the ground make me mad or drive me mad. Any of those two will work. Number six, my sister always gossips. She really gets under my skin. And finally, there's a reading part. Fortunately, we don't have enough time to read it, but we're going to go through the answers just to make sure that everybody gets them. So Ted is a talented comedian. That is true. Okay, Gordon enjoys his astronomy class. That's false. Gordon, Gordy, I'm sorry, not Gordon, doesn't enjoy his literature class. That's false. Gordy doesn't like his literature professor. That is false also. Gordy doesn't plan to stay in touch with friends from home. That's also false. And the last reading section goes like this. 
Jane went shopping by herself. That would be false. Roberta was rude to everyone in the store. That's also false. Roberta wanted to buy a dress. That's also false. And Jane usually likes the store. That is true. And with that, we finish the midterm. And I'm sorry that I just like handed in the answers, but we don't have time. We're already over an hour into the class. So um, just very quickly here, let me go through the attendance list very quickly. Um, let's see, uh, Abdi Aviso Peña is here. Alejandro Jose Quintanilla is also here. Ana Filomena is here. Ana Yanira Mendoza is also here. Andrea Michel, Andrea Michel Garcia Selva, no. Byron Rafael Avelar, yes. Boris Martin Salinas, yes, is also here. Cecilia Elizabeth Guardado is also here. Cesar Alexander Ramirez is here. Claudia Yanet Iraeta is also here. Debbie Natalia Segura is here. Daisy Carolina Rodriguez is here. Gabriela Loure Sequeira is here. Gabriela Stephanie Cortez, yes. Gladys Imelda is not online tonight, apparently. Uh, Jenny Elizabeth Santillana is here. Jose Raivina Enriquez is here. Carla Stephanie Perla is also here. Luis Fernando Hola. Enriquez, yes. Maritza, sorry, Madeline Diana. She's not here right now. Maritza Isabel Mendez Aguirre is here. Melanie Andrea Trinidad, yes. Noemi Alicia Estrada, yes. Reina Isabel Romero, yes. Rosa Esmeralda Hernández, yes. Rufino Amilcar Hernández Linares, yes. And Sandra Cecilia Munguia is also here. Everybody, thank you very much. Um, remember, no class tomorrow. Okay, it's Friday, so. Okay, have a great Friday and a great weekend. And sure. I'll be seeing, yes. Sorry to bother you. Um, okay. Could I see the answer of the main term in the section B, part one? I couldn't take a screenshot. Which one? Midterm, uh, uh -huh. part B. Part B. Uh, letter B, part one, that one. This one. I'm going to say. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. Okay, you're That's welcome. It. Okay. All right, everybody. I'll be seeing you on Monday. Take good care and have a great weekend. Thank you. Bye. Bye, guys. Bye. 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 Bye, teacher. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.